There is nothing I love more than a ginormo, humongo Sephora haul. I bought so much makeup. I can't wait to go through everything that I bought with you and we'll try on as much as humanly possible. I've got new primer, I've got new foundation, new concealer, new mascara, new eyeshadow. I love trying new makeup and sharing my first impressions with you and I can't wait to get started. So let's not waste any time. I picked up the Shiseido Skin Glow. Revital Essence Primer. It feels really, really nice. It's got a nice glow, but it's not too shimmery and crazy. And it does dry down a little bit. When I am trying a new foundation, I don't typically like to try a new primer at the same time, but we'll see. It has a little bit of a fragrance. Uh, nothing overpowering, feels quite moisturizing, it feels nice on the skin, a little bit of tack. Like I said, it does have a fragrance, but it's it kind of dissipates. So you smell it initially, but then it's gone. I should mention that the Shiseido I didn't pick up at Sephora. I actually picked it up at Shoppers Drug Mart because I couldn't find any Shiseido primer on Sephora that was available. The other thing I picked up at Shoppers was the new CoverGirl, supposed to be a dupe for the Chanel water tint, the one with the little beads inside. But I am going to save this for another video. But I did pick up the new Makeup Forever Skin Glow Foundation. Normally, uh, in their regular one, their soft matte finish one, uh, let me grab it. This one right here, they have the same bottle except the Skin Glow has a white cap and the original one has a beigey cap. I picked up the same shade that I wear in this one, 2N22, because I figure it would be the same. This one works for me, why wouldn't this one? But I also did pick up a mini size in another shade, 1N14, just to see if that might not be a better match for me. So we shall see. I love these little mini bottles. They don't offer this in the whole shade range. I think there are six shades available in the mini, but I love this idea of picking up, you know, a third of the product. Hopefully your shade is included, but if this really works, I, I really hope that they would expand the shade range because sometimes you don't need that much foundation. This would be perfect for travel. I love this idea, I love this concept. I'm gonna swatch now. I'm going to take the N14. Oh, that looks pretty good. The 2N22, different finger, and it's a little bit darker. 1N14, 2N22. Put that right next to it and see. They're both very, very close. The 1N14 looks a little bit more yellow little warmer and this one is deeper a little more neutral I would say even though this isn't supposed to be a neutral shade that's on my hand on my face I do not see much of a difference I want to swatch the original formula not the original just the different finish formula and I want to put it next to the 2N22 in the of the glow formula and see if there's a difference between them. There is a little bit of a difference. 2N22 in the uh, original formula. This is 2N22 in the glow formula and there is definitely a difference. I can see why they might have suggested 1N14 for me. I do notice that this is getting darker and oxidizing as it sits and dries down. I'm very confused. I'm very, very confused. I'm gonna go with the 1N14 and we'll see how that goes. This has a very nice glow to it. Nice medium coverage. 
it is covering nicely. It is spreading nicely and evenly. And there's that shine to it. I want to wait a little bit to see how it dries down. Although I like a glowy look, I don't necessarily want to be wet looking all day. A glow, yes. A shine and a wetness, not so much. Let's go on this side where I have more discoloration and redness that I want to cover. Still see some redness peeking through here and I might build that up a little bit. See how this builds and take a little bit more. Go over the areas where I need a little bit more coverage. Oh yes, definitely. It's beautiful. There is that shininess, that glow factor that not everybody enjoys. Next, I have two concealers and I'm so torn on which one to use. I have the Lancome Tinty Doll All Over Concealer. This is in the shade Bisque Warm. None of their neutral shades looked like they would be okay for me, so I decided to just go with the warmer one. And the Estee Lauder Futurist Concealer. I'm going to do one eye with the Estee Lauder and the other eye with the Lancome. This is my left. I'm gonna use Lancome, L, Lancome, left. That's how I'm gonna remember. That's my mnemonic device, my mnemonic device. And I can never say that word, but I love saying it anyway. Okay, and this side's going to be the Estee Lauder. As always, new concealer, no color corrector, just so I can see exactly what this can do. Here's the doe foot on this one. It's kind of rounded, like finger-like, almost. I'm going to apply just a little right there and a little bit right there. Angie Hunt Flashy for this side, and I'm going to start spreading this. It feels very uh, hydrating. It feels very creamy, pretty easy to blend out everything that I look for in a concealer. And it's got a nice medium coverage. I am gonna add a little bit more. This is doing a pretty good job so far. Covering that darkness, I'm going to get this ridge here and we shall see how this builds. It feels and looks lightweight. It doesn't look like I have a heavy layer of concealer. This is of course first impression and you know what I'll do? When I go pick up the kids later, I will take some footage with my phone and show you what they look like hours later. I always get my lid to A, it works as a primer for my eyeshadow and also covers up that darkness. Let's check in on the foundation. The foundation is feeling a little bit sticky still. There is still a glow. I'm definitely going to powder because I have a new powder to try, but regardless, so far for my preference, it might be just a smidge glowy, a smidge glowy for my preference. Some people love this, but I'm not talking about the glow, I'm talking about the wetness, right? The dry down. I, I'm i not crazy if I can feel the foundation. That was the Estee Lauder Futurist Skin Brightening Skin Sealer. I like that name, Skin Sealer. Now I'm gonna grab the Lancome All Over Concealer, the Tinte Doll. This one has a much larger doe foot applicator, get a little bit there, a little bit here and here. Uh, Nikki LaRose N, uh, N, N15, N15, God. Oh, these eyes, these eyes. I had 2020 vision, 2020, my whole life. And it was magical. Well, I didn't realize how magical it was. 
until I didn't have 20-20 vision anymore. I think it was once I hit 40, it started kind of, then I had reading glasses. And still now it's for reading mostly. I can see far, no problem, but I can't read that fine print now. There's no way. So how does this concealer feel? Not necessarily as creamy as the Estee Lauder, but it's not like a drying formula. It is also spreading nicely. This shade is working out. The coverage, it's a medium coverage. I have to build this one up too. Let's build it up a little bit more. Again, again, I have to preface that I have a lot of darkness under my eyes. If you don't suffer from uh, the same thing, this might be just enough coverage, right? I usually have to go in and that's why I like thinner formulas because I can build them and actually be precise where I build them in the darkest parts of my eyes, of my under eyes. Both looking good. Shade wise, the Lancome is a little bit brighter and the Estee Lauder is a little more it's closer to my skin tone, not as bright, but I will take that into consideration. Right now, what I want mostly is to see the wear, the creasing, the if it slips and slides or if it fades. And that's really, really what I want to test out today and let you know. But off the bat, I can tell you that they both have the same kind of amount of coverage they both feel very comfortable and I had no problem applying them. They're looking great so far. I do not have a preference. Early days and we shall find out. Okay, we're gonna powder now and I have the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Setting Powder. This is supposed to be blurring and have shine control, but still really good for dry skin types. That would be me, normal to dry. So let's uh, check it out. So I picked up the shade 2.1 Medium Neutral. It comes with a really cute puff and it has a little point so that you can get into the corners of your eyes. I think I'm gonna use this puff today. I sometimes use a puff, I sometimes don't. Typically, I don't like a lot of powder and I use a brush, diffuse it on my hand and just dust it on. But I, I wanna try it out just to see what it's got going on. Very difficult to grab this little tab if you have nails, just FYI. This is not the easiest. Oh my God, holy moly. Okay, finally. That was a mission, that was a mission. So there we go, here are the holes that the powder comes out and you're supposed to twist, uh, I guess, to lock it. What it says to do is to put the puff in, turn it around, tap it, and the perfect amount should come out on the puff. I'm still going to diffuse it a little bit in my hand only because I don't want to apply too much powder. And let's begin. I am going to start in the center of my face and work my way out. Oh, that looks very nice. I have a mess in front of me right now. It's really, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do I would just put some in the cap, that's the best thing. I'm just going to press in a very nice blurring effect. And I think this shade is good for me. I'm going to take it on the rest of my face because I'm not loving the stickiness that was left behind by the HD Skin Glow Foundation. That's a personal preference and I just don't like that feeling. I really don't. And by powdering right now, a lot of the glow has gone away. Not 
all of the glow, but some of the glow is no longer there. I see a little bit peeking through, which is fine because that's what you would want if you picked up a glowy foundation. So I really like the powder. It is providing a nice finish. It's lightweight. It doesn't look cakey at all. And so far it looks like it's done a really good job of setting the under eyes. And we'll see how it goes as the day goes on. Actually, I'm gonna take a big fluffy brush and just dust away if there is any excess powder anywhere. I went ahead and put some bronzer and blush on since I don't have any new ones to share with you today. I used the Pat McGrath in Naked Desire and the Laura Mercier in the shade Bellini. I love this shade. Moving on to eyes, I think I'm in my single shadow era because I'm absolutely loving slapping on one shadow and I'm done for the day. I picked up the Hourglass Scattered Light. I already own the shade Smoke and I wanted to pick up another shade. So I picked up this shade called Ray and I cannot swatch it because my fingernails are too long. One second. Note to self, uh, you won't be able to use your fingers if you have long nails to pick this up. So I'm grabbing a brush and let you in on this glorious, beautiful shadow. How pretty is that? I can't wait to try that. I haven't tried it yet. In a previous video, I had tried the Ilia Liquid Powder Eye Tint in the shade Sheen and I loved it. It was a beautiful brown, bronzy actually. So, so gorgeous. So I decided to pick up another shade. This is in the shade Hatch and it's like a grayish, greenish shade. It's kind of like got a hint of olive in there. It's absolutely beautiful. I tried this the other day and it went on so easily, I just used my finger, got it all over the eyelid and it was on all day and I absolutely loved it. It's not a very intense color. It gives you a wash of color really. It was just perfect. I loved it. So glad I picked up another shade and I may pick up more because as I mentioned, I am loving that one and done situation for my everyday makeup. As much as I am in my one and done single shadow era, I still do appreciate a little palette, you know, every now and then. When this became available, I snapped it up because it would come in stock and then it wouldn't be in stock, then it was for about a millisecond, then it wasn't. So when I saw it pop up, I immediately added to cart. And what I am talking about is this YSL mini clutch quad in 100 Stora dolls. And I cannot wait to try this. It's so beautiful. Let me swatch it for you first. Here is the sparkly shade. That's absolutely stunning. Next to it is a lighter, looks like a satin, and that's not showing up very well on camera. Let me go in again. It just, it's got like a sheen to it. It's a very, very light color. Below that is a deeper, looks like a satin. These feel very creamy and will likely apply like a dream. And so that's that deeper satin shade. And then we have the darkest shade in the quad, which is a matte. And it's a nice, beautiful brown. Take a look at those. Oh, how stunning. Refer number 15. I am going to go into this shade right here and apply that on the crease. Little bit of kick up, nothing crazy. Very easy to apply. Okay, I'm done. Oh, 
Okay, I'm really liking this formula so far just with one glide, right? One glide, that's how you know this is a good formula. No fallout so far. I know it's only the first shade. <laughs> oh, I should simmer down. Simmer down, Rhoda. Okay, that's done. I'm going to use this shade not just in the crease and above it for me because I have deep set eyes. I want to bring it higher than where my eyeball goes in, but I think I want to use this in the outer corner as well. So I'm just going to add a little bit there. Beautiful. This does have a little bit of a, a sheen to it. So it's a satin, but it does have a little bit of a glow to it, a little bit of a sparkle, but not a, a crazy sparkle. It adds a little pizzazz. Now I'm going to grab my rougher number one and dip into the matte brown shade. And I'm going to deepen this outer corner just a little bit. This is very pigmented. I barely had to touch my lid and it deposited the shadow so easily. Now I'm gonna dip into the sparkliest shade, tap it on my lid to get a little dancey dance of light. It's just it is absolutely stunning. Okay, now I'm going to take my Nikki N11, nice flat brush that I love using to apply liner. Dip back into the matte brown shade and just stamp it across the uh, lash line. As you can see, this whole eye look took no time at all. My goodness, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. And you know what else? I don't know if this is true for everybody, but when you have a quad that you can make a complete look with, I should hope so, options kind of disappear. You don't get confused or overwhelmed with choices. This is what you're working with. And you don't even really have to think about it. And I kind of like that. I don't know. There's something to be said about opening up a quad and you know what you're doing. You get in there, you do your job and you go, you know, Nikki N12. And I'm going to go back into this shade right here. Just get the lower lash line. I don't like a lot under my eye. Just like that mid tone, just to create a shadow underneath. Refer 28, a nice flat brush, and I'm going to go into the shade that we haven't used yet, the lightest shade. Tap it off. This one has more kick up than the rest. Tuck it in over here on the inner corner. It does add a little, a little bit of brightness in that corner but it's adding it in a very subtle way. I think I wanna go in and add a little bit more sparkle and marry those two together and just tap it where those two shadows meet just so that they can overlap and it looks gradual. I will finish the other eye and then I will be back to try a new mascara that I have. It's so pretty on the inside and the outside. I really enjoyed applying that. And now we're going to try a new mascara that I picked up, and that is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Lash Sculpt Mascara. Now, did I need another mascara? No. Did I need any of this? No. Do I love that I have it all? Yes, yes I do. Here is the wand. It's quite narrow. It's your typical wand. So I'm not going to use a lash primer as I typically would because this is new and I always like to try new mascaras without any lash primer. I'm feeling 
that it grips on the bristles grip onto the lash hairs very easily glide through nicely this is one coat i'm getting a nice lift a nice curl and a nice separation let me take a look at this Okay, I'm going to do the other eye, let this dry down a little bit, and then we'll do a second coat. Okay, coat number two, build this up a little bit. Okay, building up nicely from my little glances into the mirror. Okay, focus at the base of the lashes, mostly curl up as you twist your wand. I find that's the best way to apply mascara to get maximum impact so no clumping just some volume lengthening separating but not like a fan like separation there is that volume there let's see how it lasts and if it flakes and all that jazzola touch the bottom lashes we will move on to lips just want to point out i am noticing now i do have some fallout a little bit nothing crazy from the shadow so just keep that in mind and finally lips i don't know what's going on but i just can't resist lately just a few, just a few. Let's go through them. La Mer, the lip balm. It's stupid expensive, stupid, stupid expensive. But I did have a $100 uh, Bazaar Rewards uh, from Sephora and I took the opportunity to pick this up. And the reason I did that is my son has the crustiest lips you've ever seen. In the winter, they bleed, they crack. It's a really bad situation. And I had uh, one of these, and as much as he protested, because he hates to put anything on his lips, I put that on in the morning. Well, when he got home from school, his lips were all nice and plump and beautiful and pink, and I couldn't believe my eyes. And even later on that evening, he had said to me, I think I still have that lip balm on and it wasn't on it was just still doing its job providing moisture for his lips so really it's a miracle if you suffer from very very dry cracked lips especially in the winter time when the moisture is just sucked right out of them I am telling you this is a miracle it really is I don't know if I would have picked it up because of the price tag, it's $105 Canadian, uh, but because I had that $100 uh, reward, I did pick it up for my baby boo because his lips really, really need it. The next lip product that I wanted to mention are the new Tower 28 SOS uh, Lip Softies. They are tinted lip treatments. I have used them for a couple of days. I put actually some on this morning while I was preparing to film this video. Once it dries down and disappears from your lips, which is quite quickly, my lips are left feeling even drier than they were before. Let me swatch these for you anyway, in case you were interested. That's just my experience using them for a couple of days. They come in a cute little tube. It's got the rolly ball at the end. This one is just clear. I don't know why I'm swatching it. Let me add a little bit just to moisturize a little. It has a very faint powdery type of scent. It's a lip oily, balmy, treatment. I, I don't really, really necessarily see anything special about it. These are supposed to smell really, really nice. That one just smells like baby powder to me. This one is watermelon kiwi. So that will give you a nice pink tint. It does smell like watermelon and kiwi. I like that shade. I don't think I used this one. I used the clear one and the next one I'm about to show you. Let me put that on. Take this off. 
and see how much color is deposited. Oh, that's nice. I like this one. That's a very nice shade of pink. This one, okay. Again, longevity, not necessarily there. And then we have the Dolce de Leche. So this one has more of a brown, nudie tone to it. I really can't smell much. No, I can't really pick up any scent on this one. That's strange, right? So there we go, the clear, the watermelon kiwi that smells divine, and the Dolce de Leche that I can't pick up any scent off of. Let me get a little bit closer so you guys can see. Last month I tried the Valentino Liquoroso liquid lipstick in the shade After Club and I'm in love, in love with that shade, but mostly in love with the formula of this liquid lipstick. It is the most comfortable, non-drying liquid lipstick I have ever tried and I really wanted to try another shade and look at this beautiful hot pink shade. So. I think I'm gonna try it on today. Oh. Now this is a lot brighter than I typically will go for. The applicator of this lipstick is so flat. It's got that point at the end. It's very, very, very flat. And it makes it so easy to apply, especially if you use the point to create your line. You don't even need lip liner. This is really, really, really nice. Feels so amazing on the lips. I can't believe it for a liquid lipstick. Now liquid lipsticks have come a long way. I will say that, but this far exceeds any other liquid lipstick formula that I have tried. I don't wanna take it off, but I'm gonna because I have three more lipsticks to show you. I picked up three of the reformulated, repackaged Rouge Dior lipsticks in the Velvet formula. Here's 100 nude look. Very beautiful. Here is 220 Beige Couture. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. And finally, 625 Mitza. Oh, this one is divine. Oh, I love it. This one is the more nude of the three. This one is a little bit more rosy, Mitza. And nude look ha, is a little bit warmer. I don't know which one I should try today. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think we should try all three. Okay, I put on some Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Iconic Nude as my lip liner. This is 220 Beige Couture. And let's see what this one looks like. This is a very beautiful nude. It's not too nude where it would wash me out. Very pretty, very pretty. I love this one. This is a perfect everyday nude. Super gorgeous. This is 100 nude look. This one has a peachiness to it. I couldn't pick that up on the monitor as I was swatching, but as I am applying it, this is stunning, stunning. It's kind of like the beige couture in its neutralness, but it has a hint of peach and a warmth to it. I love this one too. Okay, last one, 625 Mitza. Let's see how this looks on. So this is much more pinky mauvey. I've been so enamored by these shades that I haven't even described what the lipstick feels like. First of all, I love this shade because it's just like got this pop of pink, but it's not bright like the Liquoroso that I just tried on. It's just enough color just to brighten up a look. Absolutely gorgeous. They feel velvety on the lips, very comfortable, 
glide on beautifully. Absolutely love all three. I didn't mention that these little puppies have a magnetic closure, which is always nice. I love that. I don't know what it is about a magnetic closure that I love. Okay, finally got through everything. That was so much fun. I'm going to continue playing with all of these products and will update you either on my monthly roundup. Some of them I might do some dedicated videos on. I'm definitely going to try that CoverGirl foundation for sure. I did promise that I was going to do a wear test and take some footage uh, later on in the day to see how the foundation and the two concealers were doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert those right here. Just doing a quick check-in, checking in on the mascara. Mascara's still doing great. How many hours are we in now? Maybe, maybe two. This is the Estee Lauder concealer. It's not creasing, it's sitting very nicely. So is the Lancome, but I am seeing darkness coming through. Again, I didn't use color corrector, but all in all, really, really nice. The foundation is really nice too, lightweight. However, I did have to powder it and that glow is mostly gone, but it is kind of coming through. I didn't put any highlighter on uh, for that reason so I could really see what the foundation had to offer, but so far so good. I'll check in again. Okay, checking in again. So we're about five hours in now. The foundation looks absolutely beautiful. There is a nice glow coming through. I purposely used matte bronzer and uh, blush so that it didn't add any extra glow just so I could see but as you can see coming through there is a beautiful nice sheeny glow coming through which is very very nice it's sitting still very nicely as far as the concealer goes uh, this is the Estee Lauder side this is the Lancome side they're both looking I'm looking at myself in the rear view mirror and it's looking so much better in my eyes than it is as I'm seeing myself in this video, which is so weird to me. But um, yes, there is a little bit of darkness coming through. Very little settling in my fine lines here. Exactly the same situation on this side with the Estee Lauder. I would say that the Lancome side has a little bit more coverage, a little bit more brightening than the Estee Lauder side. I don't know if this is shadow. Let me, let me turn. Yeah, no, see, I still, I'm still seeing a little bit more darkness here. I don't want this to be too long. I'm still seeing a little bit more darkness here. And what's that guy doing? Sorry. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not terrible considering the state of my under eyes normally. The powder, very nice, I have to say. I don't see any clumpiness, undetectable, and it's done a really great job of setting, uh, setting everything, especially under the eyes. Very smooth, very nice, someone's calling me. That was my dad calling to say happy Valentine's Day. How cute. What else did I wanna point out? This beautiful eyeshadow looks so beautiful. Even in daylight, it's not too much. You can really pull this off for daytime. And I love this Missa shade of this lipstick. Anyway, we are hunky-dory. Everything's looking really great. Mascara's nice. It's not flicking yet or anything. It looks really, really good. Oh, there's the bell. Gotta go. That's it for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.